Hello, it's Logan here, and today we are going to clean up this FXR150 cylinder head. So as you can see, the combustion chamber is a bit carbonized. We're going to clean up the ports as well, knife edge, the intake, and exhaust, and uh, port match them. Maybe give them a good sand and polish. Okay, I'm going to check it in time lapse. So I'm going to strip this thing down. It's the tools you will be requiring if you're going to do this at your home yourself. So you need a valve spring compressor, and yeah, just pushes it together, and then you can get the collets out, which are the tiniest wee things you've ever seen. So make sure you've got a tray to put these in because they're very easy to lose, and don't want to have to buy parts you didn't need. Alright, now this is Murphy's Law. You take a simple job and you think oh yeah you just strip it down clean her up do some performance mods put it back on the race bike well as you can see looking down there my two exhaust valve stems are still in there and that's because without the valves in there they don't want to come out without springs sorry so they have seized hopefully i'll go get a hammer and something soft to protect the top of the valve stem so I don't damage it in case I want to reuse them. Okay, another thing which is really handy to have is a tray separating your valves and your springs into each left hand intake, right hand intake, exhaust, etc. because they're not interchangeable. Because <laughs> if you lap in this left hand valve to the left hand seat on the head, then you want to make sure that you've got it in the correct one, otherwise they may not seal. After a light tap with something similar to a hammer, <laughs> we've found the culprit, why both exhaust valves did not want to come out. It's a bit hard to see, but there is some light rust on there, which is not ideal. Yeah, we're going to remove that lip, and we're going to just relieve around the valves to make it so that as soon as the valve starts opening, we're getting air going into the cylinder and hopefully giving us a bit more volumetric efficiency and increasing our horsepower. Right, so I've got all the inside bits done. Now this bit around here is a lot harder to get to because I just started with the hand file mainly because when you're using a Dremel if it slips the carbide burr valve seat makes a mess <laughs> so I try to use it as little as possible for the ports and everything it's a lot of material to move so we'll be using the carbide burr but just start off with the file in here just cheap file you can do that stuff easily and so I'm just going to remove a little bit from around here on each side, not much, and then I'll smooth it all out. Done with the Dremel, and as you can see, all the shiny bits, uh, we have removed material. So you don't want to remove too much material, because the more you remove, the lower your compression, well your, your theoretical compression, but the actual running compression, if you manage to increase your efficiency, will still be higher because it's squishing more air and fuel together. So, so the next thing we're going to do is down the intake port, you see where the port splits into two, we're going to knife edge that. Right, so I've done the knife edging, so if you look in there, it's nice and sharp. I've just removed a little bit of material off the roof. Nothing really, just changed the finish. I will continue to take some more. So now I'm just going to clean up the inside bend on the intake port, make it a bit more gradual, get more air. In. Not too shabby now, so you can see it's all shiny. I've removed a bit of material for around the pockets 
this is the piece that bolts onto the cylinder head. Now I'm going to clean up the transition between the two because one, they're both cast pieces but they haven't been matched. There's no transition at all, it's just completely smooth. The finish isn't actually too bad either, so I will now clean this up. Okay, so I've spent the last hour or so over a couple of days sanding so you can see the combustion chamber is completely cleaned up, all the carbons removed, nice and sanded out. Got it down to about a 600 grit finish, which that's smooth enough for the combustion chamber. The intake is looking not too shabby now. It is a rougher finish than the combustion chamber, that's down to about uh, 200 grit got another cylinder head um, in the cupboard which I'll quickly show you oh I think the oh the valves are still in it anyway this head if we can put it in the light that is a polished finish this intake and it went pretty good but I'm going to try a slightly rougher finish and see how that goes. Okay, so I have three of our four valves installed and I'm going to quickly go through how we install one of them. So, we're going to get our valve which is going in there. We are going to give it a nice coat of oil, which I've already done. So you want oil all the way down the shaft and a little bit in the valve guide. And insert it into there, pop it through the seal. Good, grab our new spring. Now, as you can see, on the bottom half, the coils are tightly wound, tighter wound. So, we want that facing the valve head. So, that's down there. And next, we want to get our valve collet retainer, which goes on top of there, like that. Now we're going to get our valve spring compressor door, we're going to compress it. Got four, so I just need my hands free for that. So I'll just put it there. So, another handy tip when we're doing this is a little bit of grease on the valve and the valve collets, and it just helps them stick to the valve in place where they're supposed to go because. It is, especially with tiny little collets like this, it's very hard to get them to stay in place. You'll get one in, and then you go to put the next one, and the one you've already put in moves. So, a little bit of grease, which won't hurt anyone, is very handy. Now, what I use, I have a tiny little screwdriver and a tiny pick. Just a straight one, and you can stick the valve collet to the tiny screwdriver. A little bit of grease, so I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the inside of the collet so it sticks to the valve and a little bit on the screwdriver. I'm going to try to get this in there. Now, it does take a few attempts unless you've done a couple of these. Normally by the last valve it's pretty smooth. There we go. 
Okay, so both of them are in there. Slowly let the compression off. There we go. Right now, a good way to quickly check that everything is in there properly, nothing. Once you start the motor, it's gonna fall out. Just grab a wee socket, set it over the valve you've just installed and just grab like a hammer or something and just give it a wee tap just on top of the collet, uh, collet the retainer and if anything was loose in there one of the collets wasn't seated properly it would pop out but it's all sounding nice and sound 